Hello everyone, it's Spawnpoint and this is a Red Magic 7, a brand new 2022 gaming phone from Nubia. It's got a 165Hz AMOLED screen, the latest Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 chip, shoulder triggers, USB-C fast charging and a dedicated gaming mode. Today I'll go over the specs, show you some gaming and give you my first impressions. So first up, it's using the latest Qualcomm chip, the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1. This was announced at the end of 2021 and this is one of the first phones to launch with it in 2022. This chip has a huge leap forward in terms of performance that it can actually deliver. This phone has got a 256 gigabytes of storage and a 16 gigabytes of memory. It also has Bluetooth, a triple mic setup and stereo speakers with DTS sound. Now the model that I have here actually sits in the middle of the range this year, as there are two other colors and specs to choose from. One has 12 gigabytes of RAM while the other has 18. So I think the 16 gigabyte is probably the sweet spot for most people and it's still very snappy for both gaming and general use. I know a few of you asked for this last time, so here's a quick benchmark score which might be useful to know how the new chip performs. If there's any other tests you would like me to do, drop those in the comments and I will tweet about it this week. Taking a look at the screen, the Red Magic 7 comes with a 6.8 inch AMOLED display with a 1080 by 2400 resolution. The display is vibrant, crystal clear and the black levels are perfect. Its max brightness is only 700 nits, so it's not super bright but for indoor use or away from direct sunlight it's absolutely fine. I've tested the screen out on a few different things like gaming, Netflix and YouTube and it all displays really well, there's no complaints with how it looks. Now the screen is actually using Gorilla Glass 5, which did surprise me at first as we've obviously had the Victus out for a while, but it's still going to do a great job of protecting that screen against drops and scratches. The fact that it is an AMOLED screen means the viewing angles are awesome on this. You can see as I turn it, it just looks so nice no matter which angle you're viewing it from. And it is super smooth as it's got a 165Hz refresh rate. And as you can imagine, this is absolutely perfect for gaming. It feels rapid when scrolling and swiping between screens, but if you didn't want to use that 165Hz, you can adjust it in the settings to as low as 60Hz. 165 is great, but it will consume more of your battery, so if you don't need it, it's best to move it down. Not only is the refresh rate impressive, it also has a 720Hz touch sampling rate. This means that even if the screen is refreshing at 165, it's actually checking for your touch input at a rate of 720Hz. That is rapid and one of the fastest phones that are out there. And you've probably noticed it, but at the top of the screen, there is a small front facing camera. That's an eight megapixel camera. Also under the screen, there is a fingerprint reader, which has been very responsive every single time that I've used it. Like with last year, the Red Magic 7 comes with some impressive shoulder triggers for gaming. These allow you to play mobile games with a huge advantage. FPS games like Call of Duty Mobile, you've now got the equivalent of an L and R trigger like you would have on a controller. Now, although they are called triggers, they don't actually move in and out. They are a touch sensitive button but there is some kind of haptic feedback going on, so you do feel a vibration when you touch them. The design of the triggers are really nice and comfy to use, especially with this non-slip texture to them. Plus, the refresh rate of these have been improved. They are now 500Hz, up from the previous 400 To enable these triggers, along with some other dedicated gaming features, you first need to switch the phone over to the gaming mode. Flicking this red switch on the side will now unlock the game space, where you'll have new options and settings available. You can see the GPU, the CPU, and the network usage. You can even change the refresh rate, turn the fans on and off, and even record your gameplay. This is useful if you want to record videos for YouTube or sharing them with your friends. The triggers can be set up on here too, where you can decide where on the screen these triggers will actually press. So I can set the left trigger for aiming in an FPS game and the right trigger for shooting. And then in a racing game, I can have the left trigger as my brake and the right trigger as accelerate. But there are loads of other settings in this game space, including snapping or overlaying windows. You can even toggle messages off so you're not distracted while gaming. This game space is definitely a huge selling point for this phone, and it really does offer some great features. Even the UI has had an improvement over the previous models. When it comes to the design of the Red Magic 7, it's actually pretty good looking for a gaming phone, but it clearly has that gaming vibe to it. We've got three cameras, including a 64 megapixel lens, an ultra wide and a macro lens. Then underneath that, we've got a flashlight too. And if you look really closely, there are even some very small LEDs on the back that light up while gaming. That includes the logo and a little LED strip either side. These can be turned on and off in the gaming settings, but it definitely adds a whole different look to it. It's got a 3.5mm headphone jack on the top, and that's useful for a lot of people while gaming. There's a USB-C port on the bottom next to a speaker grill and a dual 5G SIM card slot. Then we've got the shoulder triggers, which we showed before, and then there's a vent and a power button too. Then finally, on the other side, we've got another vent, the volume controls, and the gaming mode switch. Now I chose the Pulsar color, which is a kind of a vibrant gradient neon vibe. 
This is one of the three colors to choose from, which might surprise you that I went for this one over the others. It's also available in Supernova, which is transparent, and Obsidian, which is basically black. But when I saw this Pulsar color, I thought for a gaming phone, this is definitely the one to go for. It does feel pretty big though, so comparing it quickly to my 13 Pro Max, you can tell it is larger. But as you can see here, this should give you an idea of its size. It's got a glass front and back with a metal frame, so it does feel very solid, but also weighty. So it's running on Android 12, which is the latest Android OS. And on top of that, it's got Red Magic 5.0, which basically adds the gaming functionality. Now, 95% of the phone will run like any other Android phone that's on Android 12. It's only when you go into the dedicated gaming mode or the gaming space, do you really activate that true Red Magic OS. On the whole though, if you're used to Android, you will like this as well. Now with the new chip and the powerful gaming mode that it offers, you might wonder how hot it gets. Well, I was playing COD Mobile for a couple of hours just to test it out, and it definitely gets warm to the touch, but nowhere near as hot as I was expecting. And that's with thanks to the new cooling system that has been improved since the previous model. They've added a second air inlet, which will make a huge difference to keeping the phone cool. This extra inlet is supposed to increase the airflow by 35%. Now the fans will definitely kick in while gaming, so if you want a silent phone, this is not the phone for you. You can actually toggle the fans on and off manually though, so if it kicks in when you don't really need it, you can switch it off. But here's how they sound to give you an idea of how noisy they are. It comes with a 4500 mAh battery, which for normal use would easily last you an entire day. But when using it for gaming, it's rated for about 3-5 to five hours. It is also capable of fast charging, and it even comes with a 65 watt USB-C charger in the box. That's awesome, as last year it only shipped with a 30 watt charger instead. Just to note though, it does not support wireless charging, just the fast charging via USB-C. As mentioned earlier, it comes with three cameras. You've got the normal camera mode, but it also has night mode, portrait, and supports 4K and even 8K recording. I've taken a handful of photos and videos over the last week, and you know what, they actually look quite impressive. Sure, buying this phone, you won't be buying it for the camera, but it's nice to have a decent camera on a gaming phone. Just before I wrap up today's video, I wanted to very quickly show you the box that it comes in. Just look at the artwork on this, this is so different to anything else that I've seen. Inside the box we've got this little sleeve which has a warranty card and a rubbery phone case to provide some extra protection. And then there's the phone itself. Under that we've got a red USB-C charging cable and a 65 watt fast charging adapter. And that's everything that comes in the box. So the ultimate question is, would I recommend this phone? And yes, I really would. It's packing the latest Qualcomm Snapdragon chip. It's got an awesome 165Hz AMOLED screen, and it is perfect for gaming. I think it's a brilliant phone, and for anyone interested in gaming, this could be the perfect buy. But let me know what games I should definitely test out on this new phone, and whether you would buy a gaming phone for yourself. Well, you've just made it to the end of today's video, so thank you for watching. If you can drop a gaming phone in the comments, I know that you're still here, and I'll give you a thumbs up. And here's another couple of videos you might be interested in watching next. Don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and turn notifications on so you don't miss my next upload. You can also follow me over on Instagram and Twitter. Until next time.